Welcome to the Unreal Engine 4 The Corridor project. In this introduction video, we'll cover what you can expect from this series. You will learn how to construct an environment from beginning to end in only 10 hours. We will create one game environment and then we will light it two different ways. One as an interior lighting scenario and a second one as an exterior lighting scenario. This is a step-by-step -step guide so we will start from the very beginning. You will learn how to set up a project. We'll use BSP brushes to block in the overall space and layout of the environment. Once we've blocked in all the BSP brushes, we'll use static meshes. And then we'll use static meshes to detail the environment. We'll focus on two different lighting scenarios. One is an exterior and the other one is an interior lighting scenario. So we'll take two different approaches to lighting the same environment. We'll go through post-process on how to make this environment look better. We'll cover world settings and how to build your environment on production for best visual quality. And we'll finish everything off with a camera fly through and taking screenshots. So you will essentially learn everything you need to know to construct an environment from an idea using a set of provided static meshes and cover the entire workflow from beginning to end. And in the end, you will have an environment that you'll be able to show off with a video fly through and screenshots. There are a few assumptions about this project. One is that you have already downloaded and installed Unreal Engine 4, and that you know how to create a basic scene using common how-to functions inside Unreal Engine 4. Overall, that you have a basic understanding of how to use the editor. The static meshes that are used to construct this environment are provided for you with this project, and you will find them inside the project folder within the downloaded guide. And in the first video, I will show you how to use those static meshes in the project. A few notes on using static meshes, and this applies to any other project that you will work on in the future. The type of static meshes will always define your environment theme and focus. This means that if you want to create a specific environment, but you don't have the static meshes that support that theme. For example, if you want to create a fantasy theme environment, but your static meshes that you have available to you only include real world architecture, you won't be able to create that environment. So before you have an idea of what type of environment you want to create, you want to look through the available static meshes prior to starting any project because the type of static meshes will determine what you can and cannot create. Unless you decide to create your own static meshes, which is a separate process and that will add a lot more time to your production schedule. You will be bounded to the type of static meshes that you have currently available to you. So for this project, you have a set of the corridor static mesh set, which contains 31 custom static meshes, 26 materials and 37 textures. And these are the static meshes that we're going to use to construct our environment. So for the last part of this video, let me run through what you can expect from this series. In the very first hour, we're going to start off by setting up a project and creating a new default level. We'll then take all of the assets, materials, textures, and static meshes that are provided with this tutorial series, and we'll move them into the corridor project so we can begin to use them inside the level. We'll adjust a few project settings and move on to the second hour. In hour two, we'll begin BSP blocking stage. We will use our top-down layout and begin to create a layout using nothing else but BSP brushes. We'll judge scale, proportion, and we'll create overall skeleton, a template of this corridor with BSP brushes. This will be our guideline to follow when we begin to insert static meshes. When the BSP stage is complete and the scale and proportion is correct, we'll move on to hour three and begin to replace all of the BSP brushes with static meshes. We'll start with the floor static meshes and then we'll move on to walls, columns, windows, and ceiling. We'll then expand to include stairs, side hallways, and a bit of a second floor. In this third hour, we'll primarily focus on major architectural pieces, the structure of this environment. And in hour four, we'll begin to expand into minor static meshes and detail this environment. We'll focus on decorative meshes, such as door frames, flower pots, trash cans, 
paintings, AC vents, exit signs, and emissive light strips. We'll also detail using decals, which are materials projected onto existing surfaces. Decals will add additional layer of detail and make this environment unique. With that, we'll move on to our five. Here, we'll prep the environment to be lit for our six and seven. We'll insert a light mass importance volume, a post process volume, and delete all of the existing actors that came with the default level. These include skybox, directional light, and atmosphere fog. We'll insert these ourselves in our six and seven, and we'll tweak them specifically for an individual lighting scenario. So the purpose of our five is to create a completely black unlit level so we could begin to light it ourselves. For our six, we'll begin to light this environment for daytime or as an exterior lighting scenario. We'll use a directional light for our sunlight. We'll tweak all the properties to make it light our interior. And then we'll move on to adding secondary lights inside the interior corridor. We'll use a mist of light strips and we'll insert additional point lights to give us more control. We'll tweak the point light properties, duplicate it along the corridor, add some additional fill in lights, and light the rest of the interior. We'll be tweaking a lot of properties and we'll be doing a lot of rebuilding to make sure that this environment is lit exactly how we want. We'll finish off this hour by inserting atmospheric fog so we can have a sun disk and an illusion of a sky sphere. We'll then add exponential height fog to adjust our fog and finish off the atmosphere. In hour 7, we'll focus on lighting this environment for nighttime or interior lighting scenario. The approach we're going to take in this environment lighting is a lot different than for the exterior lighting scenario. We will use emissive light strips to start off with and then we'll insert point lights as our primary light source so we have better control over how we light this corridor. We'll change properties, rebuild and make sure that these point lights look good along the entire interior. We'll then begin to add secondary lights and additional fill-in lights. We will include additional strip lights along the corridor on the left hand side to add more detail. And we'll continue to rebuild, adjust properties for various lights and rebuild again to make sure that this corridor is lit exactly how we want. We will include a directional light to simulate moonlight. And we will finish this hour off by adding additional lighting next to the doors and above the paintings. In hour 8, we'll focus on post-processing for both exterior and interior lighting scenario. We'll use post-process volume to control a few properties, but primarily we'll use color grading technique to create our scene colors. This is one of my favorite techniques to use by adjusting colors in Photoshop then creating a color lookup table, which then we'll use and plug that in into color grading inside the post-process settings, which will then change the colors of this environment to exactly how we changed it inside Photoshop. We'll do this in both exterior lighting scenario and interior lighting scenario. We will adjust a few additional properties inside the post-process volume and we'll move on to hour nine. Here, we'll deal with world settings and building or rendering our environment on final high quality production lighting. Inside world settings, we'll focus on light mass settings and we'll change a few properties here to make sure that when we build on production lighting, our environment looks as best as it can. We will do this for both interior and exterior lighting scenario. And when we are done building both of these environments on production lighting, we'll move on to our final hour to create a fly through and to take screenshots. So in this 10th hour, 
our environment is essentially completed. We'll start off by spending some time and creating a video fly-through using Matinee Editor. We'll set up a two-camera fly-through to switch from one camera angle to a second camera angle seamlessly, create a fade in and a fade out, and render an AVI movie. So then we can show that off. And to finish off the 10th hour, we'll take additional screenshots and high resolution screenshots from various angles throughout the environment so we have more ways to show off our creation. So the Unreal Engine 4, the corridor project, covers a lot of techniques and it is a complete workflow to follow from start to finish. So let's get started.